welcome back to the Tax Advisor and Biz Coach Success Podcast. The purpose of these episodes is to help entrepreneurs become more successful, avoid tax and other business headaches. Remember to tune in frequently as we will be sharing tips, secrets, and expert recommendations in how you can manage your finances, improve wealth, and grow your business. Please like, share, and subscribe. Here's your host, Liz Soria. Hello, folks. It's Liz Soria, your host of the Tax Advisor and Biz Coach Success Podcast. And as usual, you know that I always promise you to bring the very best to my show. And today's topic is a very, very interesting topic. And the reason why I say that is because I think that we all have so much curiosity when it comes to how our brains work. So I have an incredible you know, um, guest company to the show, and her name is Paola Oleska, and she is the CEO of the Nature Intelligence System. We're going to talk about how to optimize your brain and maybe using a few techniques that can really, really help us. And boy, we know we need all the help we can get in these days, right? With all the multitasking and all that. So no further ado, I want to welcome Paula. Thank you for coming to our show and being here with us. Yes. Thank you, Liz. It's such a privilege. I'm thrilled to be here with you and with your audience. And uh, I'm very excited to be able to share with them some of the newest discoveries in neuroscience that have very practical application in our lives. Excellent, excellent. So, Paula, let me just get started that way the audience get to know a little bit who you are as a person and why it kind of clicked to, to you know, start your business and, and why you feel that it was an important message to be able to pass on to many other thousands of people out there that I really do think this is such a phenomenal topic. I really do. I'm always thrilled about learning about how our mind and our brain really works. So go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you. I share that passion with you, but uh, I didn't start out that way. And in fact, uh, I did not start my business. My business kind of started itself because I was actually a professional opera singer. Um, Oh my God. (laughs) Yes, uh, I was on stage singing opera and concerts, uh, but I also had other interests and I was looking at New York is a fantastic place to explore self-improvement. So I was looking at different things and I came across um, this new method at that time was brand new that Mm -hmm. was using mind body connection to improve how the brain worked. And I just absolutely fell in love with it. So while I was still performing, I was so enthusiastic about it that I was telling people like, hey, you can do this activity and you can read faster. And then uh, very, you know, rather quickly, I found myself uh, seeing clients, but I could not say when people say, what do you do? Other than being a singer, I was like, I'm doing (laughs) weird things. Uh, So it took me a while to understand that I'm actually in business. And I remember that moment very clearly when I was like, I'm seeing clients, I'm teaching classes. Oh my God, I think I'm in business. What does that mean? Excellent, excellent. I love your story. (laughs) That is incredible. So you just kind of out of the blue, I mean, without you realizing, I mean, you really got into a business, like you said. I mean, that's that's pretty amazing, yeah. Yes, so I, uh, if I were to write, write a book about my career, I would call myself an accidental businesswoman. Um, and I started with no business skills whatsoever because I grew up in a communist Poland where communism, as I don't know if your listeners realize that, but it was anti-private business. There was no private business. Everything was state owned and everybody had a job. And uh, if you were, you know, people who did the small percentage of people who run their businesses were actually had a very bad reputation because according to communist philosophy, uh, capitalism was very exploitative. So they were exploiters and profit was really evil and, you know, money was really bad and things like that. So I grew up with that conditioning and then I find myself running a business. So I had to overcome all these challenges. Wow. That is amazing. Your story really is. (laughs) You know, you brought something really interesting now that, that you said about how, our belief system can actually hold us back. 
How sad is that, right? Um, and, 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 you know, and out of the techniques that you've been able to, to learn, because like you said, you started a business without even thinking that you were going to start. And there you were helping other people and realizing, wow, you know what? I think I'm pretty good in what I do. And I can see results coming from others, which is really very important, right? Um, that we do deliver a good service to, to everyone that we work with. Um, what were the challenges once you realized, hey, I'm really in business here. Uh, what were the challenges that you encountered, whether they had to do uh, with in, in knowing how to market and expand your business even further? Would you mind sharing that with us? Yes, thanks for asking. So, uh, yes, of course, the first thing I was like, I'm sure other people have figured out how to run a business. And uh, as a lucky coincidence, someone told me about this fantastic nonprofit in New York that runs a, uh, a class that takes you from A to Z through all the aspects of running a business. Um, and it really straightened out my thinking because it helped me separate content from protocol. And that was a big revelation. Uh, Absolutely. And uh, second revelation was, which I think many entrepreneurs, especially on the coaching side, go through, because when you say like, who is this good for? And everybody says, it's good for everybody. I want to work with everybody, right? So I had to learn that you need to focus on that as an incoming uh, in inquiry, you can, I can work with anybody, but as an outgoing marketing program, I have to focus on who I want to work with. So I think it's one of the most challenging aspects that I, since I've been working with entrepreneurs, I know that it's one of the most challenging aspects uh, of running a, a small practice or coaching business or even a, a brick and mortar business mm -hmm. to really identify who you are serving. So that was such an eye opener and it made a huge difference in my business. I started to increase my income very rapidly after that. So and do you mind sharing with us what did you realize your niche was that you were able to really provide your service and you could see greater results in that kind of type of then niches. Is that what you did? You want to discover what were your niches and which groups you can help the most? So at that time I was working with uh, a mind body technique that had more to do with the body and helping people overcome different physical problems. And uh, so I realized that my best market would be massage therapists. And I started to, uh, I acquired a list of different massage associations and I started to market to them and they were very responsive and I was able to grow that uh, for a few years because uh, also it was designed in such a way that once they took the first level then they needed to take a second level uh, and so on. So that was running quite well but uh, then uh, I made a mistake uh, in retrospect, it was a mistake to invite the founder of that method, uh, whose name was John Fee. It, I, nobody heard about him uh, outside of that field. Okay. Uh, and he taught the first level class. And from that, nobody signed up for other levels. Yeah. So that crushed my business at that time. Uh, and uh, uh, so I was... Uh, you know, I was uh, short of money, but I had more time. So I was thinking like, what do I want to do? And I realized I want to work with businesses. So um, I thought about it. I wrote an article about, about that. And uh, I developed a, a very specialized uh, system of very simple activities or exercises I call intelligent movement, uh, which are very good to optimize the brain in, in, in certain ways. They're a little more too complicated to show on the short video. Right. Um, and then later on, they became part of my bigger offering. So uh, later on, uh, when I started to focus on teaching more specifically brain-oriented techniques, uh, I was mostly targeting teachers and parents of kids with learning issues because uh, the method that uh, I found at that time is called Brain Gym. It still exists. It's, uh, mm -hmm. There are quite a few uh, instructors. Actually, Brain Gym is a very interesting story because 
Brainstorm did not do any official marketing. It just trained instructors and people became so enthusiastic that completely under the radar, Brain Gym is now present in every country on earth. And uh, many school systems uh, either officially or unofficially use it in the States. Okay. Uh, so for a while I was teaching workshops in Brain Gym and I, was, uh, I also brought Brain Gym to Poland because I thought it was such a fantastic system and it made such, uh, di such a difference in how people could learn. So I started to train teachers in Poland how to use Brain Gym in their classrooms and therapists who worked with children. And that was very successful for a while. And then that crashed for other reasons uh, that I won't go into. But in the meantime, I was developing my own approach and I realized that my niche really is not learning, even though it's important and I love learning and I love helping people to learn. But as an outgoing uh, marketing, I really wanted to work with entrepreneurs. Uh, so I shifted my focus and started to uh, seek, uh, seek out people, professionals and entrepreneurs who could use help with mindset and with productivity. Because uh, one of the things I realized that that plagues people, and I think you may agree, that many people know what they want to do, they know what they should do, they learn a whole bunch of things, and they are not doing it, right? Right. That's one of the issues, I think. And I think because it has to do, we interrupt there for, for a second, Paul, I think it has to do, you know, because like I say, I'm always been fascinated to how a brain really works. And when we see studies, right, and surveys out there, that they just mentioned how 10% maybe we use out our brain and I call what a waste of the rest of the mass that we have here because this is like a you know what is it like five pounds at the weight of a brain how can it be we only using the 10% what can we do and here's what I'm going to come and dig with you because you're the expert in this what can entrepreneurs do to hopefully some techniques that you might be able uh in your generosity to 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 share with us maybe you know three techniques that might be able something because i know it has to do with habits brain is a very very um a tricky part of our, our, our body because it's about habits it's about making it into like routines you have to do things almost daily to make the brain think that this is normal what would you share with the audience paula that we can help business entrepreneurs out there do little things that maybe really can make a big improvement, maybe not just today, but at the long term. Do you mind sharing that with us, please? Absolutely. So uh, I want to preface that with a couple of things. First of all, there are many experts talking about the brain and saying the brain does this and the brain does that and your right brain does this and your left brain does that. And here I am offering you something entirely different and completely practical because all of what the other experts say is information. Yeah. And even though you may understand it and you may think that that gives you insights into how you function, it right. doesn't change how you function. So uh, my approach is entirely different and it's based on cutting edge neuroscience, which says that the brain is in the body. So the brain is not just the organ in your head, the brain is a communication network extending throughout your body and the mind is an outcome of what happens in that network. So instead of straining your mind to control your body, you can actually engage your body and that will change your mind and it will change your habits. Because one of the things uh, I can really relate to what you were saying about habits that in a conventional approach, which I call the common learning paradigm, you have to struggle so much to create a new habit and you have to practice, practice, practice. Yes, yes. So, but uh, it's not because the brain has to start thinking it's normal. It's because the, uh, there are two, at least two components to that. So the first component is that the front part of the brain where we take information is different from the back part of the brain which takes action. And people don't know about that. Uh, but once you understand that, and you also understand that the action brain does not respond to words. 
So wow, you- that's a very interesting point. I love that. Oh my goodness, I did not knew that part. And, hmm, okay. Right? Mm-hmm. So this is why, does that, does that explain why it's so hard to talk yourself into a habit or out of a habit? So I think most of us had a, uh, an experience of promising, like, I will not take this next cigarette. I will not uh, drink wine at the party. I will not eat sweets. Um, I will stop being annoyed with my mother-in-law. Uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then somehow we go to the party and we take a drink and we eat a piece of cake and then mother-in-law visits and I can't control my reaction and I, I'm still nasty because she's so annoying. So, <laughs> right? Right, no, that is true. So that's a very good point. I, you know, I never saw it from that perspective and it's true. Uh, you know, part of our brain, we have different sectors where we're not going to get into, you know, terminology and here medicine because none of us are doctors, but Overall, most people do understand, obviously, our brains are formed by different parts and they do different functions for us in our body. And that's the importance of keeping a healthy mind, too. So it's so important for our brains. So our backside of the brain uh, controls the action. So that's very interesting because you're right. I think I've seen that mistake a lot. And then including myself, by the way, I add my own personal stories, too, uh, when I have these wonderful discussions, like people like you who are experts, um, because... You can do so many affirmations, as they call them, positive affirmations, like, I'm going to stop smoking, I'm going to stop drinking, I'm going to stop exercising. But for some reason, no matter how much you repeat it into your brain, and I think some of my audience might share that thought with me too, hopefully, um, something happens that maybe you might, maybe you're lucky even to do it once, you follow through once, but then something happens, it's like, it just drop the desire. So what happens with that, Paula? Can, can, can you kind of um, tell us how we can help push our action more than just our words? Yes. So I just also share an example from how I experienced that because uh, I'm a, uh, a learning junkie. I'm a workshop junkie. Um, I love uh, going to conferences and learning new things. And at the time when I was still beginning of my process of my personal development, I used to go to workshops and I was excited about what they were teaching. I would read a book that said, you really have to do such and such. And I was excited and I did it for a few days. And then the excitement faded and I was like, how come I can't keep it up? What's going on? Right. So then, uh, but the thing is that again, um, once I learned those techniques that engage the brain through the body, I was able to sustain my motivation. I was able to create new habits much more quickly. And um, so uh, let's, I'm just going to quickly review the principle and then I'm going to uh, show you, we'll start with one exercise. One exercise will be excellent. That way maybe hopefully people can even do it themselves and start practicing and see that yes. really they can get some sort of result. But again, this is something that has to, it's not only a one-time fix. You have to right, do some sort of routine or something to, to help yourself. Okay, go for it, Paula, please. That's right. So I just want to review the fact that the current neuroscience called embodied cognition says that the brain is in the body and the mind is an outcome of what happens in the body. So my principle is that if you want to change your mind, you need to engage your body, and everything I teach is based on that. So uh, the first thing we need to learn is how to reduce stress, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, absolutely. So the uh, conventional approach to stress is that you have to just let it go. Have you tried to do that? Very few people. Very few people can do that, right? And again, it's the same reason because that's in what I call the common learning paradigm, assuming that the mind is everything and does everything. However, it's very well documented that stress is a physiological reaction. It's something that happens in your body. It changes your blood pressure. It changes your breathing. It changes your uh, chemical composition of your bloodstream and other things. And therefore, you need to do something physical. So there is a very simple exercise that I call self-hug that very quickly makes people relaxed. So um, can I do a screen share? I want to... 
go for it. Absolutely. See if you can. Um... Uh, let me see if I can quickly get to that. There it is. Um, so can you see it? Yes, I can. Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. So and, and uh, wait, wait, I'm going to interrupt you for a second. Uh, this is a podcast, but as we do have, we have converted it to a webcast, which means it's video. So for those who are just listening, whenever you get a chance, maybe you want to come to this portion of the, you know, the interview and you can actually watch the pictures that we're showing through the webcast, because this is something that you can actually practice and it could hopefully uh, reduce your stress level. So go ahead, Paula. So I'm also going to, of course, describe it verbally uh, so that people can follow. So ideally, we will do that as a before and after. So normally when I teach this, even uh, in a uh, lecture or a webinar, I would say, think about a stressful situation, evaluate how stressed you are on a scale from zero to 10. Let's do this exercise, and then you come back to that and evaluate how you feel. So uh, we don't have time to fully do that, but I encourage the listeners and viewers to do it that way later on once they learn this exercise. So you will pick a, a situation that you consider stressful. You will evaluate on a scale from zero to 10 how stressed you are about it. There is no right or wrong. It's perfectly fine to be stressed. We are all stressed. It's better to acknowledge it. And then, uh, you will do this exercise and then once you've done these uh three parts you are going to uh actually two parts then you are going to go back to your and you hold that position for at least a minute and preferably for maybe like three minutes and then uh you will evaluate the situation again and you will see that you will be significantly less stressed so um i'm going to demonstrate it as well as uh, if you are watching the video, you can look at the picture. And what we need to do is reach forward with your arms, turn your thumbs down, and cross your wrists and interlace your fingers like in picture number one. And while you're doing that, you also cross your ankles. And then you turn your hands inside out and you rest them on your chest like that. And then additionally, you're going to very gently touch the tongue behind your teeth, behind your upper teeth, um, and close your eyes and you will sit like that for anywhere from one to five minutes depending on how stressed you are the more stressed you are the longer you need to stay in that position okay. and after you are done with that you're going to uncross your feet like you see in picture number three yes and touch your fingertips together and rest them in your lap and you can you will continue to close your eyes and keep the tongue on the up behind the upper teeth and you hold that also for uh from one to three minutes some people say they get more uh relief from the first posture some people say they get more relief from the second posture um, it really doesn't matter they need to be done together and then uh everybody or i would say 95 percent of the people i teach is to experience reduction of stress even if we do it just for a minute so that would be a very simple tool to help you get out of this paradigm. I'm going to um, stop the share. Uh, let, get out of this paradigm where you have to mentally let go of stress. Letting go of stress mentally is impossible because your body will not respond to that. You cannot talk yourself into lowering your blood pressure, as we know. No, no we cannot. It would be nice, <laughs> but it's not possible. <laughs> exactly. So, you need to do something physical. And this is a very, very simple physical activity that you can immediately do and you can do it at any time you feel stressed. I do that personally, of course, every time I get stressed because I get stressed just like everybody else. <laughs> Much less now since I've been organizing my brain through these exercises, but I still get stressed. Excellent, excellent, Paula. And again, for those who are just listening uh, through a podcast, by all means, as soon as you have an opportunity, you know, come around the range of about, I think we're around the range of 30, 35 minutes into, uh, you know, the interview. And you can actually um, look at the pictures. There's, there's a total of three pictures, right? And those are the three snaps. And again, like Paul is explaining, uh, depending on your stress level and what it is, uh, you might need to retain a little more one, one of another posture depending on your situation. 
Um, but this is really good because what I like about your technique is the fact that pretty much anybody can do this. I mean, seriously, there's no age restriction here, by the way. This is not something that you're asking people to do, you know, uh, jumps or run around the corner or anything like that. This is something you can do from the comfort of your chair. Seriously. I mean, exactly. even at work, even at work, what, and this is for people who are, uh, you know, working from their office or, you know, even if there's some people who are employees still, you know, they're still working for others. In your lunchtime, goodness, you can do this for five, 10 minutes. And this could be such a relief uh, to be able to perform even in a higher rank than when you're under that stress, that pressure that, you know, your brain tells you, oh, you cannot do this, you cannot do this, this is too much, this is too much. You can just relax your entire body. Paula, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, your technique, I love it, I really do. And I think, again, it's so simple. Uh, before we wrap up, talk to me a little bit about the creator of great method that you created, which is a training. And what other options do you have for audience to really get into, um, again, practicing, learning about how to shift and change things that are going to be positive into their life and really utilize their brain because that's what we want to do, right? <laughs> so, right, so uh, the brain, all of, all of you, you are the brain. So um, thanks for asking. So uh, my method is called Brain Upgrade. It's trademarked and, uh, um, and uh, um, I love it. I think it's very accurate because that's what we are going to be doing. We upgrade brains. Uh, but currently also the, the word is to optimize your brain. So, um, so uh, I developed a number of programs. The one that I'm promoting right now uh, as a paid program is called Results Accelerator Bootcamp. It's an accelerator bootcamp. Okay, excellent. Because um, it accelerates results in whatever you want to do. So this bootcamp uh, has an eight week curriculum. Each week we are going to be addressing a different topic and learning different brain optimizing activities. Okay. And I'll be happy to let you know about that if you email me uh, with, so my email is paula at brainupgrade.biz and my website is brainupgrade.biz, B-I-Z. And if you email me at paula at brainupgrade.biz with a subject line, Liz's podcast, I will uh, send you more information about that workshop, but I also will have a reward for you for listening to this for free. So first of all, I'm going to send you uh, a picture of this exercise with instructions how to use it. And I'm going to send you another exercise uh, it's part of the sequence I call the implementation wizard, which is going to help you take action on the things that you procrastinate on. So you're going to get two handouts and you're also going to be invited to my private free Facebook group called Optimize Your Brain. And uh, this group is only for people who are in my programs or my individual clients. The students, you almost can't call them. <laughs> <laughs> And um, and um, this is a place, uh, as you know, on Facebook, you can post, you can ask questions, and we will have once a week, we have a QA, and a uh, and not only I'll be answering your questions, but other people too. And uh, most of my clients are entrepreneurs and professionals, but it's open to anybody. So whether you work in a corporation or you run a corporation or you are retired or you are you know, some other profession, you are all welcome to um, use that group and you will be able to, I'll give you the address and how you can join once you email me. So again, my email is paula at brainupgrade.biz. Excellent, Paula. Once again, I want to um, yeah, say to you that I really uh, thank you very much uh, for all your, um, you know, tips and little tricks and that has really helped the audience because Again, you know, one of my main uh, objectives of, you know, doing my podcast is really to help people out there. And um, I think that knowledge is so powerful, but only when we apply it and take action. And second of all, when we share it. So, uh, yeah, I, I, so yes, I, I share your passion for helping people and I admire your um, ability to bring it to people through your podcast. And I'm so thrilled that 
I have the opportunity to share this uh, with your audience because I think it makes life so much easier once you start using these mind body organizing techniques rather than just your mind because it's very tiring right it's it is it is and not just around the mind and you know paul and one of the things is that sometimes instead of wondering how can we do this how can we do that these are really techniques there's really people like you that have already created these kind of things that you know that you have put it to practice it has given results so why go out there and wonder and discover on your own when someone else already has produced this type of technique that can really help you and save you time? Right, exactly. It saves time and it saves you so much fatigue and stress and feeling of guilt because you can't do all these things that you're supposed to be doing mentally, whether it's reducing stress or overcoming procrastination or getting other kinds of results. So. I'll be very happy to uh, share with you some other techniques and uh, make your life a lot easier. Excellent. Okay, so once again, to wrap up, you have an eight-week course. It's kind of boot camp. It includes uh, the private Facebook group. Uh, you're going to be there at least hopefully once a week. And if not, there's going to be other uh, you know, uh, members who are going to be contributing throughout the, the, the Facebook. So, folks, I mean, you know, I think this is a phenomenal you know, a uh, program uh, that I think that I always have said this over and over in all my episodes is that we need to invest in ourselves. It's very, very important because why run the long path when you can do a short path and assure yourself that you're going to be more successful. And I think whatever we can work our brains, the better we can balance our body and the better we can balance our life in general. So Paula, once again, thank you. I really appreciate all your wonderful, you know, tips and everything else. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to share your website and all the contact information, um, especially in the video and also in the podcast, because a lot of people don't realize that the podcast does have a section, which is a description underneath that you can actually pull the information from there for those who are listening. So Paula, once again, thank you so much. And uh, anything else you would like to leave the audience with? Uh, anything else uh, in case they need to, again, repeat that uh, website that way they know for sure? Um, so uh, I will repeat my website, but I'm also going to sum it up with one sentence. So my website is the www.brainupgrade.biz, B-I-Z. Okay. And I want to... Uh, for those of you who are entrepreneurs, I just want to tell you, if I can become an entrepreneur after being an opera singer, you can do it for sure. So uh, share your passion. Don't give up. Keep moving forward and keep finding new solutions. And I'll be very happy to be a part of your process. Thank you. That's, that's amazing. Uh, once again, thank you really, uh, Paula. And I wish you a lot of success in your business. And for everyone out there, Thank you, folks. And like I said, stay up to date, like, share, and comment. It always helps to grow audience. And especially the main purpose behind every episode and time that we spend doing this kind of things because our time is valuable and we offer a lot of free information is to really help you, help you to improve your life and to be more successful also. So again, like, share, and comment. And, uh, and I will see you in the next episode. Paola, once again, thank you so much. And to everyone out there, into the next episode. Take care. This Thanks is Liz. Thank you so much.